we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed we want to turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 shall we read together ready go always remember that Jesus Christ a descendant of King David was raised from the dead this is the good news I preach. Always remember, I like always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. So let's read this one. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. Today, if you were in the main line churches, you would have been asked to come to church with a palm front now, or a flower. That is to say that it was a week before the resurrection that Christ triumphantly entered Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a place that you, you wouldn't want to dare to go when you don't belong to the fraternity of the Jews. And like somebody they felt was raising a set Jerusalem was a dangerous place. But one act pushed him in Jerusalem. And the people held him because of one single act. The raising of Lazarus from the dead. That preceded his entry to Jerusalem. Let's read John chapter 11 from verse 45. John 11 from verse 45. Therefore, Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed him. Not a few of the Jews, many of them come to visit Mary, the brother of Lazarus, and had seen what Jesus did, believed him. So they were living the Jewish fraternity and drawing to what they call a sect that was founded according to them by Jesus. So many were coming because of one act. Verse 46. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Some of them sneaked to the Pharisees and reported what was going on. Verse 47 says that, Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sahindri. The Sahindri is supposed to be the rulers of the land the rulers of the land. What are we accomplishing? They ask, here is this man performing many miracles. So all that they were trying to do, the scheming against him, they are saying that it's amounting to nothing. What are we accomplishing? The man is raising people from the dead and many are thrown into him. The next verse, 48. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then somebody made a suggestion. And I want you to pay attention to the suggestion from one of them. He was the high priest who was leading the Jewish community at the time. So this is 49. Shall we read 49 together? Then one of them named Cephas who was a high priest that year, spoke up. Now let's listen to what he is going to say. You know nothing at all. So he knows something. Let us hear what he knows and what he's going to say. Now 50. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. Now they were saying that if we don't deal with this man, Rome will come and deal with our temple and then, and then maybe deal with all of us. Then this man is saying that it is better for one man 
to die than all of us to perish. The next verse. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. So this one is a supply from John, that when the man was suggesting to the Sanhedrin that it is better for one man to die than for all of us to die, John says that he was prophesying. He was prophesying that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for the nation, but also for the scattered children of God. To bring them together and make them one. This is a mystery. So Cephas was actually prophesying about the death of Jesus. And the fact that when he dies, he will save that nation and bring all God's people who are scattered across the globe. That is wonderful. Verse 53, so from that day on, they plotted to take his life. So the one who actually suggested that they took Jesus' life was who? Was who? Was who? Cephas. And this man, he actually did not know that his mouth was speaking about the will of God. Raising Lazarus from the dead, he has become a hero. So now the people pushed him into Jerusalem. And then when he got to Jerusalem, they hailed him. They sang Hosanna for him. And in Jerusalem, some of the people who have gathered to see Jesus, because of what they have heard, were some Greeks. These were not Jews. They didn't have any connection with God. So far as the Old Testament and the law was concerned. But they came to Philip, one of the disciples, and their request was simple. We also want to see him. We also want to see him. And then Philip contacted Andrews, and then the, they together went to Jesus, and then said, the Greeks also want to see you. Under normal circumstances, these Gentiles should not come near a Jew. How much more a rabbi? And then Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls down and dies. It remains a single seed. They were not talking about seed. They said they want to see you. But why was he saying that? He was saying that the day I would die, I will resurrect and it will germinate and bring many people home. And when that happens, there will be no barrier. The Greeks can come to me, the Ghanaians can come to me, the Indians can come to me. But beyond this, he made a very profound statement. Still in Jerusalem, John chapter 12, verse 32. John 12, verse 32. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people unto myself. 2,000 years plus have gone. He has been lifted out from the earth. And he says, I will draw all men unto myself, all people to myself. Today you are part of the people, I am part of the people that he has drawn to himself. Now what does this mean to us today as Christians? Coming to... The topic of my message today, some of you like topics, so let me give you a topic. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. Always remember, don't forget. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. And I'm saying that he has been lifted up he was put on the pole. He died and he rose again. He has been lifted up. What does it mean to you and I today? Now, the above scripture, so let's go back to 2 Timothy 2 verse 8, where we began. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8 from the New Living Translation. Shall we read together, ready, go? Always remember that Jesus Christ a descendant of King David was raised from the dead. 
This is the good news. I preach. Now the above message, this message, this word here, is from the Apostle Paul to Timothy, his son, and pastor. So he was telling Timothy that always in your ministry, remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. Always remember. There should be no single day that you should forget. That is the reason we come to church. Do not forget. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. By this statement, Paul sought to convey to Timothy the fact that the resurrection of Christ is number one. The foundation of Christianity and Christian ministry. So the foundation of Christianity is the resurrection of Christ from the dead. So you must always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Number two, by this statement, Paul is telling Timothy that the sustaining power of the ministry and the Christian life is a resurrection of the dead. So the resurrection of the dead, that the idea, that the notion that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead is a sustaining power of the ministry and the sustaining power of Christian life. Number three, he is trying to suggest that by that statement, the resurrection of Christ from the dead is the cause of effective ministry and effective Christianity. There are many, many, when your Christianity is like that, maybe you do not know that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. He also wanted to get across to him the knowledge that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead, is the message of the ministry. He says, uh, is the gospel I preach, and it should be the gospel we preach. Machion was always telling the congregation, the church, that we should preach what Christ and him crucified. When there was tension between Pentecost and the apostolic, he encouraged his people to preach Christ and him crucified. And this is the message we preach today. No other. We must lift Christ up. Once we lift him up, he will draw all men unto himself. Paul says that this is the message I preach. Jesus' resurrection is proof that he is the accredited savior of the world. Jesus' resurrection is the proof that he is the accredited savior of the whole world. He is not just a founder of the Christian religion, but he is the accredited savior of the world. And let's read Acts chapter 17, 30 and 31. Acts 17, 30 and 31. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance but now he commands all people everywhere to do what? To repent. Let's move on to the next verse. This is the big one. Shall we all read together? For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. By the man he has appointed. Let's move on. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So God has appointed that one man will judge the world. And he has given proof to that by raising that single man from the dead. If you know anyone who has been raised from the dead and is alive today, who died and took his life back, let me know his name. Lazarus was raised by Jesus. But Lazarus died again. And he was not raised. I'm sure by that time Jesus had left. Now when you go to the tomb of Lazarus, history says that they wrote on his tomb, this is Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, twice dead. 
twice dead. He died once, he was raised, he died again. He died two times. He also has a record, twice dead. But we are talking about the man whom God has proved to the whole world by raising him from the dead. If you know any person other than Jesus, lift up your hands and tell me the fellow's name. Tell me the person's name. Always remember that Jesus, the descendant of David, was raised from the dead. This is the, 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 the hope we have. This is the strength of the Christian ministry and the Christian life. The fact, this very act of the resurrection sets Jesus apart and makes Christianity an exclusive religion. Even though Jesus, our Lord, is the Lord over all. Christianity is an exclusive religion because of that very art. The Father Jesus was a descendant of King David means that we are not committed to a theory. It's, there are so many religions that are committed to theories. Some talk about light and sound, light and sound. Some to worship idols. Some have a whole lot of theories that they are worshiping, especially the enlightened folks. So we are not talking about a theory or a cause, but a person. We are talking about a person. We are committed to a person, and his name is who? Jesus Christ. So we are not committed to any theory. We are committed to a person. And his name is Jesus Christ. Even those who belong to political parties, they are committed to a certain philosophy, an ideology. We are not committed to a philosophy or an ideology, but to a person. Because he says that always remember that Jesus Christ, a, a descendant of David, a person, was raised from the dead. Now, was raised from the dead. Was Jesus a descendant of David? Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Quickly reach to your Bible and don't try to put something down. When you go home, preach this same message to a friend. Preach this same message to a friend. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Now, do you have... I'll read this and then try to give me King James if you have. A shoot will come up from the stump of, who is that? Jesse. From his root, a branch will bear fruit. Can I have from King James if you have? Or in the New Living Translation. Let me check the New Living Translation. Now, out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. Now, this one tried to make it simple. The NIV will say that a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. But Jesse is the father of David. And then the scripture we read is that always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of David. So the NIV says that a stump from Jesse and the New Living Translation, instead of using Jesse, says that David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. Let's go back to the NIV. Now you realize that it says a shoot will come out from the stump of Jesse or David. Will I be correct? Fine. Then from his root, a branch will bear fruit. Normally, in proper English, you will not have to put the branch in capital letters. If the branch is in capital letters, then the branch is what? A proper noun. It's referring to a person. So here, one of the names of Jesus is he's called what? Branch. Do you know why he's called a branch? Because he branched from his throne of glory to bring all of us to himself. By his coming onto the earth, he has become the branch. He branched to craft all of us in. That is why he's called the branch. Jesus Christ, a descendant of David, was raised from the dead. He is the branch. Now verse 2. Verse 2 says that the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. 
I want us to check whether this one is referring to Jesus. Let's go to Luke, Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. He's saying that this descendant of David, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. So let's check whether he's referring to Jesus, the branch. He went to Nazareth where he has been brought up. So Jesus was raised in Nazareth. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. As was his custom, he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free. They handed him the scroll and he turned to the place which was making reference to him. And he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Isaiah says that this shoot, we is called the branch of David, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. And he says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he's trying to say that I am he. I am he. Always remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of David, was raised from the dead. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. I'll take verse 1. Matthew 1 verse 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David son of Abraham. So when we talk about the genealogy of Jesus, they are saying that Jesus is a descendant of who? David. Now verse 5. Simon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz, the father of Abed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse. Yeah. The next verse, verse 6. And Jesse, the father of King David. Now we are looking at the genealogy of Jesus. We are tracing it. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother has been Uriah's wife. Now let's jump to verse 16. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, and the husband of Mary. So you see that, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So when you look at Joseph, he's coming from the root of David. And then when you have to trace it also from Mary, she is also coming from the root of David. Now, verse 17. Okay. Thus, there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, and from David to the exile, to the exile to Babylon. And 14 from the exile to the Messiah. And who is the Messiah? Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David. This Jesus has been raised from the dead over 2,000 years ago. And he is alive today forevermore. And he gives life to whosoever confesses him as Lord. To us who are born again, let us always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. And just as he was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised from the dead. This is the message we preach. And this is the hope that we have. This is the strength of Christianity. This is the foundation that we stand on. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 12. Now, pay attention to this one. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? How? The next verse, 13. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. If you will die and we will not be raised, then Paul is making an argument that not even Christ has been raised. 14. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is what? Useless. And so is your faith. 
That is why he's saying that remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. He says that this is the gospel we preach. If Christ was not raised from the dead, our preaching is useless. So is your faith. You have believed for nothing. So when we are preaching about Jesus, let us preach confidently because he was raised from the dead. When we say we are Christians, let us have this anchor hold because we have believed something that is right. Verse 15. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead were not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. How many of us believe that our faith is not futile? Yes. And we are not still in our sins, no. Verse 18. Then those who have been falling asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through one man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through one man. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. Always remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news. He says, I preach and we preach. This is the good news. This is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4. When we say good news, what do we mean? When we say gospel, it is the first of importance. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you. The gospel I preach to you, which you have received, on which you have taken your stand. The next verse, please. By this gospel, you are saved. By this gospel, you are saved. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. So what is the gospel? The next verse now. That for what I receive, I pass on to you as of first importance. First important is the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. For that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. This is the gospel. And by this gospel, we are saved. By this gospel, we are saved. With this confidence, brothers and sisters, an assurance of the power of the resurrection and the authority of the message we preach, let us tackle this convention that we are going to start on Thursday with all the seriousness it deserves so that the effect of this year's convention and the experiences we are going to derive from this power power convention that I'm foreseen will linger on for a long time to the glory of God. I therefore urge you, all of you, to prepare well for this convention. Now, don't say that I'm not a pastor. I'm not going to preach. Don't worry. But you prepare well. Be praying for the convention. Be fasting for the convention. Don't fast and say that, Lord, I want a breakthrough. You fast that the power of the Holy Ghost will work in this convention and God will deal with your needs. When we were kids, we were always praying for the church. We thought we were praying for the church, not knowing that God was working on our inside. Let us set up prayer warriors. When it was convention time, even though we were young, we were not eating. We were praying that the hand of God will be revealed. The message we preach is an authentic message. Jesus Christ, the descendant of David, raised from the dead. I am praying that God, who accredited Jesus with signs and wonders, will back this convention with the miraculous. In the name of Jesus, 
that the sick will be healed, that the dead will be raised up again, that many souls will be brought into the kingdom of God. Always remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. Shall we rise to our feet? And if you believe and you can speak in tongues, you begin to blast in tongues. If you can't speak in tongues, just begin to praise the name of God for the resurrection of Christ. Shall we all pray? We have not believed in vain. We have not believed just a theory. We have believed in Jesus, the descendant of King David, raised from the dead. Wobo son da 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 for us. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Shall we pray that your anchor will hold? You have believed something good. Pray. Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David, was raised from the dead.